Okay, in the last video we discussed random variables and uh, some of the tools and uh, conventions we can use for computing probabilities associated with random variables taking particular values. Uh, in this video we're going to discuss what do we do when we have multiple random variables and we want to talk about probabilities of multiple random variables taking multiple uh, ranges of values. And I'm going to focus here on continuous random variables, that's the uh, greatest use for our class. Um, and what we're going to use is the joint probability density function. So probability density function is the same as before. When we say joint, we're just going to talk about multiple random variables. And here I'll start with two random variables. Um, so we're going to discuss uh, lowercase f. Again, the same notation as before. That's going to indicate that we have a probability density function. We're going to have two random variables in the subscript here, indicating the two random variables we're interested in. Two variables in the argument, indicating the two corresponding numerical values. Then we'll have two infinitesimals, a dx and a dy. So that joint PDF for x and y multiplied by a dx and a dy is going to indicate the probability of x falling in some range. And we dropped a couple symbols on the slides here. Um, this is going to be the probability of x falling between small x and small x plus dx, and y falling between small y and small y plus dy, intersection of those two uh, uh, events. Okay, so the, so the definition looks quite similar to the probability density function for one random variable. Now we just have the intersection of two of those types of terms. Okay, and then um, just like with the single variable case, we can integrate this probability density function to find probabilities of falling in some region. So for example, if we want to f find the probability of x falling between a and b, and y falling between c and d, what we'll do is we'll integrate that joint probability density function, integrating x from a to b, and integrating y from c to d. Okay, and if we look at that in some uh, graphical form here, so this is a um, plot x and y on the horizontal axes and this probability density function in the vertical axis. So we have this kind of mountain of probability here. In, in the places where we have high, um, you know, the altitude of the mountain is high, that's where we have high probability density or kind of more likelihood of seeing those types of x and y values. And if I think about an x uh, ranging from a to B, and let me switch colors to make this a little easier to view, um, and a Y falling between C and D, what we'll do is we'll, we'll trace out the A's and the B's here, and then we've got the C and the D limits, something like this approximately. So we've got this kind of range of, of um, x and y values that we're interested in. And so the integral of a, th of a three dimensional function or a, you know, this three dimensional plot is going to indicate the volume underneath this mountain. And so the volume underneath this uh, red shaded region here is going to indicate the probability that x and y take those values there. Okay. And uh, then we can see that this again from this definition so that probability density function times a dx and a dy is equal to a probability. So the density function itself, without those you know, infinitesimal increments, still has to be positive. And then the integral of this density function, when we integrate x and y from negative infinity to infinity, that's got to be equal to 1, because the probability of x and y taking some values has to be 1. OK, so we can plot this density function with, uh, with mountains of content uh, probability here on the left. An equivalent way to represent this is, is on the right, where we plot just the contours of those mountains. Right, so we can take um, and trace out some contour here where if I walked around that contour in space I wouldn't be going uphill or downhill and that would correspond to kind of a contour over here uh, of x and y's and so on. So, so we can plot out kind of these multiple contours here. And if we plot just the contours uh, instead of the mountain then we can superimpose other stuff on it. So let's do that uh, on the following slide. So there's those contours for x and y the joint probability density function indicated by those contours. And then now let's let's talk about some ways we can manipulate that. So if I have the joint distribution of x and y via this joint probability density function, and I'm interested in x alone, we call that the marginal distribution of x. So I'm only interested in x at the margin. So the way I can get to that, and that's going to be the same notation as we had looked at in the previous video, probability density function for x, I can get there by taking the joint probability density function for x and y and just integrating from y values from negative infinity to infinity. All right? So that would give the, the probability density of x, and then all possible values of y are considered when I integrate 
across that, right? So, so y no longer plays any role because any potential value of y is considered in this this limit of integration, right? And so, if I think about what I'm doing here, I had this this these mountains of probability x and y, and I integrated from uh, uh, y being negative infinity to infinity. So I integrated across this whole strip here for a given value of x, and I took the volume underneath the uh, the mountain under this strip. And I pushed all of that probability content over. I'd reduced the dimension by one. Now I have just this probability density function as a function of x, this two-dimensional distribution over on the um, back here. And so that this shaded region here, which is the probability density function times the width dx, is e equal to the volume underneath of that old uh, integration strip in, the, in three dimensions. Okay. We can do the same thing for y. If I want the marginal probability density function for y, I'm just going to integrate for x values from negative infinity to infinity, and I'll have that, that probability density function for y. Right? And we see those those distributions sitting kind of over at the margins of the figure, and so they're, those are marginal distributions. I can also find conditional probability distributions and say, you know, if I know the value that y takes, conditional on that, what's the probability distribution of x? And here's where these uh, the initial discussion we had of, of set theory is useful. So if we recall, with random events, I could find the conditional probability of E1 given event E2 as the probability of the intersection of those two events divided by the probability of E2. So we're going to take that same convention and apply it to these PDFs, realizing that the PDFs are just um, you know, essentially telling us about probabilities of events, um, which are events of x and y taking particular numerical values. Right? So if I've got, what I'm going to be interested in is the, the conditional probability of x given y, where small x is the number that I'm interested in x taking, and small y is the number that I, it's given that y is taken, and I'll multiply that by a little d, dx at the moment. Okay, and we're going to define that as the probability of x falling in some range from x to small x plus dx, given that y fell in some range from y to small y plus dy, and then we'll just let that dy go to zero, so that this isn't uh, um, an issue, you know, when I've said given y equals y previously. Okay. And so I'm going to think about this as the x falling in that range is just like in a, a random event, E1. It'll either happen or it won't happen. And then y falling in some range is event E2. Right? And so if it's the prob conditional probability of an E1 given an E2, I can just use that same formula from the top of the slide and say, well, that's the probability of E1 intersected with E2. Then divided by the probability of the event E2. And then that numerator, if I look at that, that looks like a joint probability density function for x and y times a dx dy. That's from, that was from our first slide of the video, just a definition of the joint probability density function. And then the denominator is a marginal probability density function for y multiplied by the dy. Okay, so my dy's in the numerator and denominator can cancel. The dx on the right-hand side can cancel with that dx over on the left-hand side, and what I'll see is that this conditional probability density function then is, is defined as the joint probability density function for x and y divided by the marginal probability density function for y, and that's what's given in the equation down at the bottom of the slide. Okay, Here's a graphical uh, picture real quick. Let's take a look at this to think about what's going on. So I have those mountains of probability content, and uh, uh, so I've got just the contours drawn there, and then a couple slices at, at values of y equals y1 and y equals y2. Here's a couple slices through that mountain, just showing the heights of the mountains there. And um, so these are the, the joint probability density function for x and y. So x is varying continuously, and then y is equal to y1 in this case, y is equal to y2 in the other case. Right, so those are slices through the mountain. And then over on the left-hand side, we've got just the marginal probability density function for y. Right, That's when we integrated over x and, and reduced the dimension of this thing and, and kind of only had probability density as a function of y. Right? And that density function given at a y1 has a particular value and a y2 has a particular value. Right? And so what we see is that these slices here, uh, they look like probability density functions, but they don't have area equal 1. Right? The area of these two slices is not equal to each other, so they can't both be equal to 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, if we look at this formula, we're going to take kind of the slice is the numerator, the probability density function evaluated at a particular value of y, 
and then the denominator is going to be the height of this marginal distribution over on the left hand side here right so we're going to divide by that height and that's going to renormalize things to force that um, slice to have area equal one okay so here over on the right now we've got the conditional probability density function for x given y which is just the shapes from the left hand side divided by the, the heights of the marginal distributions to renormalize them to have area one so we can see those probability density functions and then given a value of x we can find probability density I can also say that you know the probability density function integrated from all values all x values from negative infinity up to small x that shaded region is going to be the conditional cumulative distribution function for x given y and illustrated for two different value conditioning values of y okay and then also another nice parallel with our uh, set theory that we uh, first introduced is when we talked about events e1 and e2 being independent uh, if the probability of e1 conditional on e2 was the same as the probability of e1 we can do the same thing for random variables and we say that x and y are independent random variables if for for all values of y the conditional probability density function for x given a y is equal to the marginal probability density function for x and so I've got a probability density function for x or I've got a conditional probability conditioned on y and those two numbers are the same thing or those two density functions are the same that means that knowledge of y is not updating or not affecting my, my inferred probabilities of x then I'll say that x and y are independent and then it turns out if that statement is true then the following five statements are also true so I can say that kind of the reverse swapping the order of x and y or I can say that the the joint probability density function for x and y is equal to the product of the marginal probability density functions and then I can do a kind of comparable um, statements for cumulative distributions and functions instead of probability density functions okay so if x and y are independent then all six of those statements uh, mathematical statements are true and if any of those mathematical statements are true then x and y are independent as well so I can also say uh, kind of if and only if okay so that's independence of x and y and that is a quick look at uh, looking at multiple random variables and uh, probability density functions in particular uh, for multiple random variables